जय राधा वल्लभा राधा वल्लभा श्री राधे प्रभु पा प्रभु पा जय जय प्रभु पा जाम विष्णु पाद प्रवंश परिवाजिक आचार्य श्रोत शत श्री श्रीवेम गे से भक्त वेदांत स्वामी शील प्रभुपाद की जाम विष्णु पाद प्रवंश परिवाजिक आचार्य श्रोत शत श्री श्रीवेम गे भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर शील प्रभुपाद की ताय गौर प्रेम नंदे आल ग्लोरी स्टा समुद्र आल ग्लोरी स्टा समुद्र आल ग्लोरी स्टा समुद्र आल ग्लोरी स्टो श्री गुरु गौरंग आल ग्लोरी स्टो शील प्रभुपाद की जय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर Hare Krishna we are reading from Shrimad Bhagavatam canto 7 chapter 15 instructions for civilized human beings and today text number 36 yap pravrajya gruhat purvam त्रिवर्गवनाषु सवैवापत्रप यज्य गृहा पूर्व त्रिवर्गव यदि अपत्रप यज्य गृहा पूर्व यदि भिक्षु अपत्रप यज्य गृहा पूर्व यज्य गृहा पूर्व Yeah. 
Vaishnavis? Yapravaja Gruhat Purvam Yapravraja Gruhat Purvam Trivargha Pavanat Punaha Bhikshu Savevanta Syapatrapaha Yapravraja Gruhat Purvam Trivargha Pavanat Punaha Yadi seve tan bhikshu Savai vantasya patrapa Ya One who Pravrajya Being finished for good And living for the forest Being situated in transcendental bliss Gruhat from home, Purvam at first, Trivargha, the three principles of religion, economic development and sense gratification, Avapanath from the field in which they are sown, Puna again, Yadi if. Seveta should accept Tan materialistic activities. Bhikshu, a person who has accepted the sannyasa order. Sa, that person. Why? Indeed, Vantasi, one who eats his own vomit. Apatrapaha, without shame. Translation and purport by Sri Divan Grasasi Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Translation. One who accepts the sannyasa order gives up the three principles of materialistic activities in which one indulges in the field of household life, namely, religion, economic development, and sense gratification. One who first accepts sannyasa, but then returns to such materialistic activities is to be called a vantasi, or one who eats his own vomit. He is indeed a shameless person. Purport. Materialistic activities are regulated by the institution of Varnashrama Dharma. Without Varnashrama Dharma, materialistic activities constitute animal life. Yet even in human life, while observing the principles of Varna and Ashrama, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra, Brahmacharya, Gruhastha, Vanaprastha and Sanyasa, one must ultimately accept Sanyasa, the renounced order, for only by the renounced order can one be situated in Brahmashuka, a transcendental bliss. In Brahmashuka, one is no longer attracted by lusty desires. Indeed, when one is no longer disturbed, especially by lusty desires for sexual indulgence, he is fit to become a sannyasi. Otherwise, one should not accept the sannyasa order. If one accepts sannyasa at an immature stage, there is every possibility of his being attracted by woman and lusty desires, and thus again be becoming a so-called gruhastha or a victim of woman. Such a person is most shameless, and he is called vantasi, or one who eats that which he has already vomited. He certainly leads a condemned life. In our Krishna consciousness movement, it is advised, therefore, that the sannyasis and brahmacharis 
keep strictly aloof from the association of women so that there will be no chance of their falling down again as victims of lusty desires. Om Ajnana Timiram Dasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Thank you for assembling this morning for Srimad Bhagavatam class. I seek blessings from all of you for this spontaneous class. <laughs> so we've been um, reading instructions for civilized human beings. And now Narad Muni started explaining about Sanyasha Ashrama. So Sanyasha Ashrama is is very important ashrama for preaching. Sanyasha ashrama is mainly for preaching. It is mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita, referring to, I'm not very sure which Purana. Uh, let me see. Uh -huh. Referring to Brahma Vaivartha Purana from Krishna Janma Kanda. In Chaitanya Charita Amruta, it was mentioned that in Kali Yuga there are five things were prohibited Ashwamedam Gavalambam, Sanyasam, Phala Paitrukam, Devarena Sutotpatthim, Kalo Pancha, Vivarchayet. Ashwamedam. So performing the Ashwameda sacrifice. Gavalambam, performing Gomeda Yajna, Sanyasam, accepting Sanyasa, and Devarena Sutotpatim, producing children from um, brother's wife. So these five things prohibited because main reason people are not qualified to perform, like to perform Ashwamedha Yajna or Gomeda Yajna, Somebody have to have a proper pronunciation of the mantras, and similarly, to uh, to continue sannyasa ashram, one had to have very deep and high, deep realization and very high attachment to the absolute truth. Sannyasa means it's satnyas, one who is seeking after the absolute truth. So it's called sannyas. So as long as one doesn't have that higher um, attachment, in Kali Yuga it's very easy to downfall from the uh, vows of Sanyas Ashram. Um, although it was prohibited by the Acharya, uh, by the scriptures in Kali Yuga, still um, Sanyasa order being awarded, uh, we see in our tradition, in the beginning um, of our ISKCON movement, Srila Prabhupada gave sannyas even to 20 years old people, <laughs> devotees, 20 years old, because it was an emergency situation at that time. So, in, have you ever uh, been through emergency situation, state emergency? Which one? <laughs> okay, that kind of emergency situation. Mm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. mm. 
In the state emergency, when there is a political uncertainty, if there is a war, or politician fall down, or some attack, so that time they choose anybody or everybody in the army to fight against the enemy. So they don't consider whether you have training or no training, they just pick up. Okay, you know how to handle the gun, you can hold the rifle, 15, 20 kilos, that's okay, you come, shoot wherever you want to shoot. They just take. So similarly, when Srila Prabhupada started, it was like an emergency situation. So he didn't consider who is qualified, who is not qualified, but the qualification given by Srila Prabhupada to them, by his mercy. And those who could able to fight, and those who could able to um, follow Srila Prabhupada instructions, and those who could able to go deeper, they sustain. The same thing, when you put somebody who doesn't know how to um, chain the magazine to their rifle, and you send them to war field, he may survive until the first magazine, second magazine. But when it goes, I remember when I was getting trained in army, uh, in the uh, university days, for the, they call NCC. They train us for three years, and they teach us everything, how to disassemble, assemble the rifle, change the magazines, shooting, aiming. But one who doesn't know in that situation, either he may shoot somebody else, or he may die. So similarly, those who cannot able to withheld the forces of material energy, they may fall down, but we cannot blame them because it was emergency situation in that scenario. But as an institution, we also learned and progressing with uh, thorough verification of candidates, whoever apply for sannyas. And here, Srila Prabhupada mentions that materialistic activities are regulated by the institution of Varnashrama Dharma. Without Varnashrama Dharma, materialistic activities constitute animal life. What is that regulation? Srila Prabhupada, sorry, talking here. Materialistic activities are regulated by the institution of Varnashram Dharma. What are those activities regulated? What kind of activities being regulated by Varnashram Dharma? Any? Eating? Yeah? Yeah? Hmm? Accumulation of wealth, yeah. Brahmacharya. Brahmacharya, yeah, that's one of the ashram. That is one of the ashram, but what are the activities being regulated here in Varnashrama? The activities of material modes. Isn't it? In Brahmacharya, or if you take Varna, in what are the Varnas? We have four Varnas. Those are Ashramas. Huh. Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra. So in Brahmana, which mode is predominant? Goodness. And in Kshatriya, Passion. And in Vaishya, Mix of passion and ignorance. In Shudra, predominantly ignorance. So those modes which produce the activities, they are regulated. And in Ashrama, for the spiritual progress. In Brahmacharya Ashram, what is the main function of a Brahmacharya? Brahmachari. What kind of life? Student life. In student life, what they do? Study. Yeah. So, Swadhyaya. So, studying Vedic scriptures in Brahmacharya. 
and in Grihastashram, what are their regulation? What they do? Yeah, raising family and accumulating wealth. And in Vanaprastha, what are their activities in Vanaprastha? Austerities, performing different kinds of austerities. In Sanyasashram, preaching, educating everybody else, all the different ashrams. So they are the teachers of the society. So in these days, although we send children to pretty much everybody, we all go to school. Even those who are in the down line of the poverty, still they send some kind of school to give some kind of education. But that education is only for how to end livelihood. So after completing our education, if one doesn't get any job, they say, oh, your course doesn't have any value. So the modern education is only to get some livelihood. Whereas the spiritual education that a brahmachari gets, so brahmachari is not that we see these days, like we are staying in brahmachari ashram. But this age is not actually brahmachari age. So brahmachari, he graduates when he is in 20s. So it's supposed to start from the age of five, like how we send to kindergarten. So similarly, it's supposed to start from that age. And in Brahmacharya, we learn how to control senses and the mind, and we learn how to equally see everybody, and how to withheld from the forces of material nature, especially from the attraction of women. Is Brahmacharya only for men? Why? Huh. So, it's both ways, both ways. And after continuing graduating from Brahmachari Ashram for like how you graduate from the university, then you choose your career. Similarly, the Brahmachari will choose whether he can enter into Grihastha Ashram if he is not able to control his mind and senses and still he has attachment and inclination, he will proceed to next ashrama, Gruhastha ashrama. And from there he will proceed. Since he got good training in Brahmachari ashram, he can be a good Gruhastha and he knows, he learned what is the ultimate purpose of the whole existence of human form of life. Then he strive for the same purpose, although he entered to Grihastha Ashram. And from there, because he got a training, once he finishes his Grihastha responsibilities, then he moves forward to Vanaprastha Ashram, and there he perfects himself, and finally ends up at Sanyasha Ashram. So that's the proper way, Vedic tradition way. And if somebody very much fixed, okay, I don't want to go into Grihastha Ashram after graduating from Brahmacharya life. He will fix himself, he will continue directly, accepts Sanyasha Ashram. So both the paths are there. But ultimately culminating at the Sanyasha Ashram. That's what Srila Prabhupada is writing here. Indeed, one, one is no longer disturbed, especially by Oh no, previous line. Yet even in human life, while observing the principles of Varna and Ashrama, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra, Brahmachari, Brahmacharya, Grihastha, Vanaprastha and Sanyasa, one must ultimately accept Sanyasa, the renounced order, for only by the renounced order can one be situated in Brahma, Shukha or transcendental bliss. So Prabhupada is saying, one must. What does it mean when you say, you must do this? 
It's mandatory. One must means it's mandatory. So does it mean all of us should accept sannyasi ashram? No, but Prabhupada is saying one must. If not with the danda, but mentally one has to prepare. So what is that in two days ago, Kesho Prabhu was explaining the sannyasi danda. What does it mean? Yeah, you offer your body, mind and your words in the service of the Lord. So one who can engage that while living in wherever condition we are, so he is considered sannyasi. So we need to practice that, we need to practice it. So utilizing our body, utilizing our words, utilizing our mind always in the service of the Lord, then one becomes Jivan Mukta. One can. So thus, thus one must means the principles of Sanyas Ashrama we should accept by the end of our life. You know the story of Kailash? Have you heard this story? No, there was a Brahmachari. He graduated from Narada Muni school. So after graduating, upon graduating, Narad Muni asked him, you know, you better continue your brahmacharya and accept sannyasa and finally I will take you back. But this Kailash is very much attached. He said, no, I want to get married. He said, okay. Uh, but once you finish your marriage and once you got children, I will come and I will ask you, I will take you back. He said, okay. And he promised, Narad Muni gave permission, he got married. Then Narad Muni goes, Kailas got married, nice beautiful wife and he got children. Narad Muni go ask Kailash, Kailash, you promised that you will come to, come back to spiritual life and you know, continue. Kailash said, oh, oh Narad Muni, see I got these children, I have to look after them, I have to get them married and so many responsibilities, you please come later. Then Narad Muni comes after some time and he asks again, Kailash, come, ready. And Kailash says, no, 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 they just uh, got twenties, they finished their schooling and college, they had to settle, they should get a good job, only then I can come, otherwise they don't know how to um, sustain in this world. He says, Narad Muni says, okay. He comes back after some time. Then? Like, after five years, I come back and then... Mm. Again and again, like, each of them. Yeah. And Narad Muni comes after five years. He says, no, 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 they just got married and they don't know how to look after the business and house. You please come after some time. And then Narad Muni goes, he comes back. And then he asks the children, where is your father? He says, oh, my father passed away recently. And there is a small dog in the house. And puppy comes and licking Narad Muni's leg. He says, oh, Kailas, you, you become a dog in the house. <laughs> oh, he says, but at least now you come with me. And Kaila says, no, no, Narad Muni, they don't, still don't know how to take care. That's why I came as a dog, I had to look after them. Narad Muni says, okay, you still doesn't want to come? He says, I will come, but give me some more time. And Narad Muni comes after some time, then dog gone. And Narad Muni asks, where is your dog? Oh, we don't know a dog. Uh, no, one day he suddenly disappeared. And then he goes, he knows, Narad Muni knows, and he goes into the garden. There he sees a small snake. And he asks the snake, Kailas, at least now you come. He says, no, 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 Narad Muni, still they don't know how to look after, they see the children, look at this elder son. He is pretty much... Uh, 
not taking any responsibility, I have to look after them. Otherwise, thieves and robbers, everybody coming. Uh -huh. Still, you didn't learn the lesson. He calls their boys, hey, hey, snake, snake, snake. And then everybody comes, start beating the snake. He says, now at least learn. He says, oh, please, please, take me now, take me now. So, we don't want to be in that situation at the end of life. So, we, we have to keep a certain limit. Otherwise, there is no way. There is no way. I remember, um, just be, before joining Brahmachari Ashram, um, I, I told my mother, because she was nearly close to leaving the body, so I told her, I want to join Brahmachari Ashram and I want to you know, somehow settle there only. I don't want to further continue. He says, no, no, you have to have children. You have to have somebody to look after you. Like how you're looking after me now. You should have somebody to look after you at the old age. Otherwise, what happens? Who will look after you? Generally, this is the conception when we got children, right? And I was telling my mother, so it's not that I am looking after you. I, I didn't look after you because I left you in India. I went to Australia to study in your old age for my own um, sustenance. But I came back because after becoming devotee, I understood that it's my responsibility to look after you. And not just looking after your material body, but your spiritual destination as well. Then she somehow agreed, but later anyway, Krishna's mercy, everything went well. <laughs> but that's the original responsibility everybody carries in their life. So those who we give birth, it's not just maintaining them materially, but ultimately one has to give spiritual perfection. In the fifth canto, uh, Rishabh Dev says, Mata Nasasya, Janani Nasasya, Guru Nasasya. For why one should not become a um, guru or one should not become a king, one should not become a parent? Namo Chayati Samapeta Mrutyu. So if one is not able to deliver the dependents from the ultimate death, hands of, so one should not become. So similarly, one should not become, as mentioned in this verse, a sannyasi, unless one is completely freed from the desire of sex life. So why? Because that's the attraction which binds the jiva in the material world. That's why this material world is called Maituna Aghar. Maituna means sexual attraction and Aghar means the prison. So it's a prison house of sexual desire. And this is there in every living entity, every living entity. If you, uh, two years ago when I was, um, visited India, in my uh, niece's house, they were watching National Geographic channel. Suddenly a clip came, there they were showing how different birds attract their mates. And after seeing that small clip, I was completely in, you know, mesmerization. Human beings had nothing in front of them. And there is one small puffer fish and that draws a very, very beautiful drawings under the depths of sea sand and it collects all the rubbish and it removes, then makes it a fine sand, then makes so fine at circles just to attract the opposite sex fish. And like that, there are some birds, they transform themselves into different shapes and they dance so nicely and they change their eye color 
and they they dance like so mad i'll i'll share that link and all for the same reason attracting the mate even after getting the human form of life yes that attraction is there but the only way to come out of that attraction is to develop our attraction for krishna as long as we don't develop attraction for krishna all other attractions they pull us down only attraction that take us away is attraction to the personality of godhead and krishna is all attracted that's why he is krishna and burjan prabhu uh, in the first canto lectures he tells when he is explaining about the absolute truth so absolute truth is the truth that whichever attracts us in this material world whatever attraction we have in this world krishna possesses them in a ocean deep in an ocean <laughs> whatever attracts us if one is attracted by the beauty of opposite sex and look at krishna how much beautiful he is you know our our attraction between male and female if you know if 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 a miss universe is walking by and there is a dog beware of the dog it won't say oh me you are miss you you are so beautiful i will not bark at you it will bark and she pig may be very beautiful for the he pig not for us isn't it and what to speak of other species within the same species we don't like other continent person other region so within the same we don't have that much attraction but krishna's beauty krishna's attraction is not like that krishna's attraction you know, it is mentioned in the 10th canto when krishna is walking in vrindavan forest playing his beautiful flute when the birds were flying they see krishna playing his flute look and get his beautiful face they stand by wonder and they forget flying also then suddenly come down when he is walking all the deers all the cows and the calves they forget they when when krishna playing the flute hearing that sound calves forget drinking milk and when he is walking river emuna the waves stand still you see in krishna's beauty and what after hearing all that krishna's beauty still we don't get attracted to krishna's beauty so what keeps us away our conditioning any other our desires our choices our ego yeah so all this our desires our conditioning all this hold us back so we don't want to be a miser so miser means one who has immense wealth but he doesn't know how to spend it so similarly we if we don't utilize our human potency to develop love for the lord so we become misers so and what to speak of somebody who willingly accepted the highest order of life and thinking that this is the ultimate but still losing the taste for ultimate and but trying to seek pleasure from the lower things so that's why very strongly in this verse it is condemned he is eating a vomit you know how badly it smells with all the... have you ever vomited yeah have you smelt so bad same thing the material activity is nothing but an vomit <laughs> that only understand when we try to get the higher taste as long as one doesn't have the higher taste and there are i know 
we see dogs when somebody vomit the dog come and immediately licks is it eats all the obnoxious things so for it so pleasureful and there are some animals some birds they eat their own vomit like if you if you see um, what is that bird lives upside down bat yeah bats they eat their own vomit <laughs> so the material activity once we left it as a devotee we should not accept it back <laughs> but still for a for a person who accepted the sanyasa order and to continue that's why in the bhikshu gita the 11th canto bhikshu gita bhikshu tells when he accepted the renounced order when he was going he chants this mantra he says esham sta asthaya paratmanistam so now i have accepted this renounced order now i will fix paratmanistam esham stava astaya paratmanistam abhyasitam purva tamair maharshibi now i will follow abhyasitam i will follow the footsteps of purva tamair maharshibi and the rishis and great rishis the path i follow aham tarishyami duranta param by following their footsteps aham i will tarishyami i will certainly cross over duranta param duranta means very very difficult to cross over duranta param how tamo mutum mukundangri nishayvayeva by firmly fixing at the lotus feet of the lord otherwise there is no way there is no way so only way by following in the footsteps of previous acharyas and firmly taking shelter at the lotus feet of the lord so these two are very very important and then aham tarishyami tarishyami means i will certainly cross over duranta param duranta means very very difficult in this age it's very difficult to follow sanyas order even to follow brahmacharya both are pretty much in the same level whereas for a brahmachari there is a um choice he can continue or he can enter into grahastashram but whereas for sanyasa is you left vomited out that's it so i say both the ashramas should firmly follow the principles of particular ashrama and firmly fix in the service of the lord and that comes from our sadhana so that's why we are sadhakas so whatever sadhana elements we do beginning from chanting reading and every service we have to always do it when with the relationship with the lord so as long as we don't put relationship in center it makes it a burden it creates burden so for for parents if their children go for one or two in the toilet or urine they don't mind cleaning it because they see everything in that relation oh he belongs to me he is mine so we also have to develop that i belong to krishna he belong to me of course both that's even advanced stage but at least we have to develop theoretically that relationship in whatever service we perform so otherwise this small small attractions name fame prestige everything comes and they disturb our relationship so finally shila prabhupa saying mm. in our krishna consciousness movement it is advised therefore that the sanyasis and brahmacharis keep strictly aloof from the association of women so that there will be no chances of their falling down again as victims of lusty desires so it's it's not just it is main responsibility of the practitioner 
those who are following brahmacharya or sanyasi as well as it is the responsibility of other ashramas also other devotees that to help each other if somebody is trying to follow their brahmacharya principles so we facilitate we have to we should facilitate them to follow their brahmacharya vows not going close to them or not um, entertaining their senses and we had to give training for the both men and women so when they should dress properly when they come to temple or when they come to the close proximity of brahmacharis or sanyasis so in that way so we encourage them because it's not possible for everybody say for example if somebody is trying for olympics everybody encourages them they try to help them so similarly those who are practicing brahmacharya all others they can help helping to keep the distractions away if 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 certain things not conducive for their practice so we try to avoid them for their benefit so in that way both ashramas everybody will get benefit ultimately at least we can send somebody <laughs> okay hari krishna i'll stop here if you have any questions comments or corrections please Hare Krishna Prabhu thank you for the nice class Prabhu you mentioned how the training of brahmachari starts from the age of 5 where we send them to gurukul and make the children uh, acquire some spiritual education but prabhu we see that this uh, gurukul thing is not possible in most cases because we are especially for the people who are living outside of india S- and also prabhu we hear in lectures that the family that stay and pray together they make progress really quickly so then why is sending children to gurukul encouraged here hmm. so what do they do in gurukul for 20 years they stay away from their family and no gurukul is not just staying away from family but what is the main purpose in gurukul spiritual advancement do you come to temple every day yes. yeah do you chant every day yes do you read shrimad bhagavatam every day mm. that's the training so since you cannot we cannot completely stay in the gurukul but the training which you are getting now that is also very very important so similar training everybody should get so that's the whole purpose when we get that kind of training i was not this fortune what fortune you got i was not that fortune so we all became devotees pretty much in mid 20s or late 20s or some lucky devotees like zack prabhu or dwish pitambar prabhu they become devotees in their late late teens i became devotee after undergoing all the garbage <laughs> in the material so that garbage will carry forward but whereas the training which you all receiving like coming to temple every day and chanting the holy name trying to sit for bhagavatam class and learn shlokas all this should be given to everybody then it becomes very easy thank you prabhu hari krishna No question. We'll stop here. Vindra Shrimad Bhagavatam ki, Jai Shrila Prabhupada ki, Jai Nitai Gaur Premanande. Hari Hari.